toasters you do not have to be woke and broke that's actually counterproductive that goes against why you're here why you were created man you are here to manifest from the spiritual world into the physical world you're here to learn to teach to give back to master both worlds hey don't be woke and broke let's get into it Get your glasses up, get your glasses up, a toast to the men. And toasters, as you come in, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share this content, hit the notification button. You do not want to miss getting notified about this great content. Now, woke and broke. Man, uh, before the word woke was, was out there, very prevalent and popular, this has been this has been preached for years for decades that to get to heaven you have to shun or hate money uh, reject money to get to heaven and so you have to be broke you, you have to be poor you know it's been taught that, that the poor will inherit the earth in actuality you know the, the word says the meek will inherit the earth and, and what that means is the meek will omit or decline worldly power in order to have riches in heaven so it would the, the, the meek the person who is meek would decline or omit to have worldly power to have riches in heaven to get to that upper echelon in spirituality now what is meek and how can you decline or omit power where well, you got to be in position you got to be in position to omit and decline power some of you are not in position to do that you're weak not meek the meek are powerful people who have the, the, the capability who have access who have means to have worldly power but they decline it they omit it and they choose heavenly riches so some of you claiming that you're meek, you're actually not meek. You're not even in position to omit or decline any worldly power. So that's what makes the meek so powerful. They'll inherit the world because they have they have the ability to have worldly power. They have that ability. They have access to that. They have the capability, but they decline it. They omit it. And they say, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go that route. I'm going to go the route of helping the needy, helping the poor, educating them, enlightening them. I don't want worldly power, but I'm going to use my wealth, my influence, my intellect, my spirituality to enlighten people. And, and I'm going to decline. I'm going to omit the worldly power and I'll choose a different kind of riches. So that that's the meek. Some of you are not meek. You're, you're just weak. You're weak mentally. You're, you're weak financially. You're weak spiritually. So let's not get it twisted. Now, how do we get to that point, man? How do we get to that point to where we can manifest what we're supposed to have on this earth? You know, uh, faith, faith without works is dead. You know, the word says, you, you show me your faith uh, without works. I'll show you my faith by my works. Yeah, I'll show you my faith by my works, meaning you, you'll ask me, wow, what kind of faith you have? Well, just look at my works. I'll show you my works. Yeah, I didn't I didn't have the degree. I didn't have the schooling, but I manifested this. Yeah, I didn't have the, the perfect credit or the, the right amount of money, but I manifested this. Yeah, I didn't have the intellect in this discipline, but I manifested this. I had faith enough to go out on a limb. I had faith enough within myself, within my higher self, to say regardless of the circumstances, I'm going to create, I'm going to manifest. That shows my faith. Where well, we've been taught, for years we've been taught, that faith will show that we don't have much. And we'll keep praying to God, we'll keep saying how much we love God and we love Jesus, but we hadn't manifested anything. And man, that's a sin. And when I say a sin, that's waywardness. That is waywardness, man. We got to first be rooted spiritually. Rooted spiritually. That's what we got to focus on first. And that's what Neville Goddard teaches. You know, uh, Joseph 
uh, Murphy teaches something a little bit differently, but never guard the teachers and Jesus teaches, you know, we got to work on that spirituality first and whatever we think, feel our energy, our mindset, whatever that is in, in the upper echelon of us, that higher place, we then have the capability of manifesting anything we want in the physical, in the spiritual world. Man, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Man, there are people out there that will tell you they hate money. They hate the structure. They, they hate the economy. They hate the way things are going. But in reality, what I've come to find out is these people lack faith in themselves. They, they are scared to compete or they don't feel like they can compete. And so what they do, they try to reject or shun the system or, or denounce the system or speak badly about money hey amen I I figured it out I have figured it out these people just can't compete or they don't want to compete they lack faith but a true person of faith they don't need everything perfect they don't need everything handed to them they don't need the right circumstance because they got faith within themselves and they'll manifest anything they want that's the rags to riches story. They'll do that. And, and so let me tell you, everybody wealthy is not evil or unrighteous. Everybody poor is not good or righteous. Just doesn't make sense. I say it's an equal ratio. So money is not the, the root of all evil. I, I think the heart, the intent, you know, that's the only thing that separates any of us is our heart, our intent. Are we righteous or unrighteous? What are we going to do with this? Well, not just money. What are we going to do with uh, the gift of God? What are we going to do with uh, being handsome or being beautiful or being uh, intellectual? You know, what are we going to do with that? Being a, a great orator. Uh, what are we going to do with our great relationships? Intent and heart. That's what separates all of us. It's not money. It's intent and heart. Having faith in yourself. That's what separates us, man. Uh, a few months ago, I ha had an associate. I say an associate. That would speak badly about money. And, and this person spoke about wanting to get rid of money. Uh, that we didn't need money. We wanted to get rid of it. That it was evil. Uh, that that we shouldn't, you know, <laughs> we shouldn't be using it. We just wanted to get rid of it. And so I listen. You know, I really don't debate. Uh, sometimes I'll engage, but I listen, but I knew it was BS, you know, but I'm listening. And a few weeks after that, this person asked me for a donation for their, their, their plight, their nonprofit. They asked me for a donation and I, I, I just said, man, nah, no, nah, I can't sow my seed in that because, you know, your mind is bipolar. You know, you don't know if you're hot or cold. You know, you're lukewarm. I, I gotta spit you out. I can't. I can't invest in that. First, you know, you're saying money is evil. How we should do away with money. You know, and, and if you feel like like that, hey, so be it. But you can't come back and ask me for money. No, it doesn't work like that. It, it just doesn't work like that. And but I kind of find out, man. Like I said, when you really get to know these people. They are scared to compete. They don't have faith within themselves. Man, I don't care where you put me, what time in history you put me or place me in. I'll be okay. I'll, I'll be great. Uh, as long as I got the faith in myself I have now, I'll be okay. So it doesn't matter what situation I'm in. You can drop me into a foreign country right now where I don't speak the language. I will be okay. Uh, trust me. I'll be okay. And, and everybody doesn't have that type of belief, that type of confidence, and I understand. But what the problem is, these people sometimes have huge platforms, and they'll sway the people. They influence the people with the spirit of, of uh, discontent, the spirit of uh, uh, lack of self-confidence. They'll influence the masses. But let me tell you, man, you, you have to compete in this world there's no way around it um you got to show your value you got to show your worth even youtubers podcasters content creators we're competing i may not be competing with you directly 
and I'm not I'm not competing with anyone directly but you best believe we're all selling something we're all selling something and we're all trying to grab an audience engage an audience and sustain an audience all of us so if you're not why are you doing it so we're competing in a sense you know for an audience and, and that's perfectly okay man you just got to have faith within yourself and keep it pushing now I want to dispel this notion that we should do away with money now has money been used uh, to do evil yes have has money been used to manipulate yes it's been it's been used to do some horrible things but it's also been used to do some great things also and uh, it cost this world cost it cost the electricity cost the food costs the, the toilet paper costs everything costs and so if I'm poor how can I help the poor not possible right just like if I'm mentally ill how can I help the mentally ill if I'm handicapped how can I help the handicap just doesn't make sense right so I have to use the money or whatever my gifts are whatever these tools are I have to use this to help the needy I can't be one of the needy it does, doesn't work we can't all be in the same box being needy it's blind leading the blind will never get out or, or progress ever you know now I know money was created for for self, well, a couple of reasons man one, one of the reasons is politically to create armies to have uh, political influence taxes I get it but I believe another reason it was created was to create an invisible boundary in people's minds to have order in the world let me explain there's an invisible boundary in your head that keeps the masses not everyone that keeps the masses from being disorderly uh, from, from being disruptive right so we got goods and services in the world we'll take a grocery store let's say uh, the food was free let's say Walmart said every Monday let's say they say every Monday and Tuesday from 8 a.m. to 12 uh, p.m. the food is free man do you know how many people will be killed will be maimed will be crippled will be injured because people rushing in to get this free stuff no one's gonna sit back and say let me take my time no one's gonna say okay I won't go on Monday I'll just go on Tuesday between 8 and 12 no everybody's gonna try to rush in and get what they can get now in a perfect world we will all home and create and manifest with our gifts our natural gifts and talents in a perfect world it's not gonna work like that because we have free will so you're gonna have lazy people right you're gonna, you're gonna, just, you're gonna have some, some evil people you got some, some manipulative people everybody's not going to carry their weight to where they have something to exchange so if you're a good barber and I'm, I'm a good farmer so that's an exchange or he's a plumber he's a carpenter she's a baker so we can exchange everybody's not going to do that so we have to set a boundary to say okay if you don't work you don't eat if you don't have anything to exchange you don't get blessed you don't you, you don't get anything so you work you eat you manifest you eat because if not we're gonna have some lazy people we're gonna still have some people trying to get over 
And so we got to create that boundary in people's head to bring order. If not, man, this thing would be chaotic, man. This world would be chaotic without money. And it doesn't have to be money. It has to be something of exchange, something there, a boundary in people's heads to keep order. I'm telling you, if not, it'd be crazy. And you know it. You know it, man. You know it. Try having an event. Try having a huge party. And you tell people the liquor's free, the entry is free, and the food is free. Try it. And you see how much stuff is wasted. You see how much stuff is being taken out without permission. You see, people just throwing stuff everywhere, just wasting stuff, stuff on the floor. No appreciation, no skin in the game. There must be an exchange. I know people want a world where things are just given out freely. No, there must be an exchange. Even if there's not money, we have to exchange energy. You have to exchange a gift, a talent, a time. You have to exchange something, a skill set. You have to. Or this thing will be out of control. Yeah, man. So don't be woke and broke. Don't fall for it, man. These Dr. Umar Johnsons out here. Hey, I respect a lot what the brother has done. But the same people he criticizes, he criticizes the millionaires, the billionaires, but then asks for donations. Or he wonders why they don't donate to his causes. Well, you criticize them. You can't have it both ways. Like the associate I was telling you about earlier, that person wanted it both ways. Wanted to criticize the system, didn't want to compete, didn't want to have faith, didn't want to have confidence, but wanted a donation from me, from my manifestation things I created, want a donation from it. Nah, nah, nah. I, I can't sow a seed in that, man. So as always, man, love. Peace.